The Cup Series heads to Iowa, where a partial repave is sure to present some unknown challenges. Let's talk Iowa by the numbers. I'm now joined by NASCAR analytical expert from WinTheRace.info, Greg Mathern, here to talk Iowa Speedway. The NASCAR Cup Series heads to Iowa, the 7 8 mile short track for the first time ever, and it's never looked quite like it's going to look this weekend. Partially repaved in the corners, you and I were just discussing this before we hit record, Greg, a total unknown out there in Iowa this weekend. Uh, we look back at like recent Xfinity Series winners, and you see Ricky Stenhouse with three wins. You see Brad Keselowski, Ryan Priest, and Corey LaJoy have wins on their resume here at Iowa Speedway. So uh, the data is interesting to say the least, but I can always trust you, Greg, to make the most, to find the trends. So let's start with maybe who the favorites are. Coming into this weekend, I feel like Joe Gibbs Racing and Toyota have the edge because they've been so good at most of the short tracks this year. Christopher Bell won at Phoenix in dominating fashion. They led, Toyota led like 298 out of 312 laps there. And then Denny Hamlin at Bristol, Richmond, and I guess Dover, if we count that, has also collected victories. Some Hendrick guys, you know, spoiled the party at Martinsville. Joey Logano at North Wilkesboro in the All-Star Race. But Greg, do you feel... I'm on the right path with Toyota, or is it too hard to say which team or manufacturer has the edge? Yeah, no, I think you're 100% right with that. Toyota has absolutely been, you know, the dominant one at these tracks. When we look at our pre-qualifying uh, ranks for this race, that bears itself out. You know, Denny Hamlin is uh, number one. We got Martin Truex down there at number two. We do then have, you know, some of the Hendrick guys that you talked about, Larson and Byron falling there. But then we've got Reddick. We've got even Bubba Wallace is up there. He's run very well at these. Toyota has been very, very strong at these. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. has an average running position of 5.32 when we wow. look at Phoenix and Richmond. Uh, behind him is a huge gap, actually, to Denny Hamlin at 7.06 uh but then it's tyler reddick christopher bell the first non-toyota in average running position at these tracks is kyle larson at 9.46 so he's you know four places behind the series leader in martin truex jr so yeah you're you're 100 on track here the toyotas have really been the class of the field at least in the points races um because it's been a while since we've been at one of these tracks you know we we haven't been at a short flat track in quite some time we did have the non-points race at uh, north wilkesboro which was run by somebody else <laughs> won by Joey Logano. So it is, uh, you know, it's hard to say, but certainly they have been the favorites. And understandably, when people are looking at this race, that's that's where they are right now. I'm of the mindset that track position is going to be extremely important. You mentioned Joey Logano's win at North Wilkesboro. That was also a freshly repaved short track. And Logano effectively led wire to wire. I mean, it was very difficult to pass up towards the front. So you know, with that in mind, I think about how important qualifying might be. I think about fast pit crews. I think about uh, crew chiefs who may be willing to be bold with their pitch strategy prefer track position over tires um, what what do you think about that are there any then drivers that jump out at you that maybe fit those those three categories better than others yeah i mean as you noted passing has been hard this year there, there's just there's no doubt about it you know the eye test tells us that when you get up to the front of the track it is harder to pass in fact the stats back that up mm. Um, if we look at the quality pass metric, which is one of the loop data metrics that NASCAR publishes, a quality pass is any time a driver passes a car that is inside the top 15. So if it was normally distributed throughout the field, we would expect that to be about 41% of passes. This year, quality passes have only been 29% of passes. Wow. And in fact, if we jump all the way back to the last time we saw, you know, a non next gen car a, a non gen 7 car um in the gen 6 we saw that number substantially higher it was about 35 percent just across the you know 2021 season um and then at the very end of it the very last race that we saw in the gen 6 car uh at phoenix and that championship race in 2021 it was 45 percent. so we are definitely seeing harder to pass it has been a really really tough go um particularly we saw north wilkesboro I mean, Denny could get alongside Logano there for a little bit, but he couldn't get him. He couldn't make that pass. And 
if it didn't happen right after the restart, there was just no shot. So I think qualifying is going to be incredibly important, as you noted. When we look at that, Logano actually, again, jumps out. He is someone who's done an incredibly good job of qualifying this year. Ironically, one of the favorites has been really, really bad at it. Um, when we look at Chris Bell, he has not made a final round at the short tracks this year. His wow. qualifying has been really, really poor. Um, you know, he's just not had it going off for him at the start of these races. Bell needs to make it up somewhere. He's either got to come out with a much stronger qualifying or he's going to have to just be an incredibly dominant car. Um, kind of like what we saw at Phoenix where he... I think clearly, you know, had the best car. And I don't think there was a whole lot of question about that. Yeah, I was going to say of those 29% uh, quality passes at Phoenix, I, I swear Christopher Bell was responsible for at least half of that in that race. Christopher Bell has been the leader in that uh, metric, actually. Hmm. When we look at quality passes in net passes at uh, Phoenix and Richmond, he has 45, which leads the series. Wow. Um, and his 64% quality pass rate is second best in the series. Now, when we look at who is ahead of him, it's... Martin Truex Jr. He has 71% of his qu passes being quality passes, but he has so many fewer passes, right? Mm -hmm. Now, some of that's because he started up higher, but yeah. Bell has been the one who has been able to pass. Um, and we saw that both at Phoenix and at Richmond. So he definitely has been able to overcome that starting position, but he has had that struggle. Uh, and real quick, you know, beyond just qualifying, you know, pit crews play a huge role in keeping track position, getting track position. Um, based on what you've seen, who would you say are the better pit crews or maybe most aggressive crew chiefs among the front runners? You know, there's a little bit of two different parts there, but, you know, the easy thing to look at, you know, the, the clearest thing to look at is who are running, you know, the best pit stops. Um, at Win the Race, we do a little bit of work to try and filter out some of the uh, noise, and we try and rank uh, the pit stops based on just four tire ranks, and we try and filter out, you know, anything that's a particularly long stop or a particularly short stop. You know, if something clearly went wrong or, you know, happened there, we try and filter that out. If there was an issue on pit road, we try and filter that out. Chase Elliott becomes our clear number one in those hmm. uh, stats. Elliott's our clear number one. Our second tier, we've got Larson, Hamlin, Logano, Byron. The five team, though, is slipping a bit of as of late. They hmm. started off the year on absolute fire. Um, the other one who's coming on is Chris Bell. Uh, started a little bit slow to start the season, but again, those last four races, uh, his crew has rated five, 12, three, and one. So they've been strong. Brad Kay as well, uh, you know, again, started a little bit slow, but our last three races, Darlington, Charlotte, Gateway, one, four, and three. So pit crew is going to be important. I think we have to look at that. And I think there definitely are some of those, uh, you know, top tier teams that we can say, hey, th these are guys to rely on. And Elliott would be the number one who we think is going to be strong. Well, yeah, I hear all those names you're mentioning. Chase Elliott, been very consistent top five, top tens this year. And then Christopher Bell and Brad Keselowski. I think Bell has three straight top tens, including that win at Charlotte. Keselowski lately had three straight top threes. Like, It's clear that fast pit crews lead to good results more times than not in the race. But there is, before I let you go here, Greg, I got one final question because there's one driver whose name I just feel like keeps coming up through this conversation. And maybe this is way out there. But when we look at drivers, Below the playoff cut line right now, there's one name that keeps coming up, and that's Joey Logano. We talked about him at North Wilkesboro. You mentioned him as one of the top five, maybe best pit crews recently. Joey Logano has a knack for winning at new things. He won the first clash at the Coliseum. He won the first Bristol dirt race. He won the inaugural gate race. He won on that repave at Wilkesboro. I keep coming back to that because I feel that's the closest comp we have this year to a weirdly repaved Iowa. I'm leaning Joey Logano to get his first points win of the season. Is that crazy, or do you feel like there's another driver maybe that we aren't that we're overlooking? No, I think Logano has a has a legitimate shot here. I don't I don't think you're crazy about that at all. He is a guy who, as you mentioned, has been incredibly good 
at new events. He ha- has won all those events that you talked about, and he is qualifying well this year, which yeah. again, as we noted, could be incredibly important. If passing is hard as it has been this year, that could be a really strong point for him. Um, they had a great advantage with you know the Penske guys uh, just recently at um, Gateway, having gotten to run the tire test, so they had a whole bunch of data, and you know Penske came out really strong. They don't necessarily have that this weekend. Uh, the Ford driver who tested here was Brad Kozlowski. So, you know, yes, no. I think his knack for winning is really important. I think he has a shot for that. Um, I think some of the advantages that he's had in other races recently maybe fade back. But when we look at his qualifying, we look at his knack for winning. Absolutely. He's a guy that I'm going to have my eye on. Um, I do want to see practice first we've got a full practice session this weekend which i'm really excited to nice. see we're going to get 50 minutes of all the cars on tracks they have three sets of tires they don't have to do inspection until after qualifying so they'll get to make changes uh so it'll be really interesting to see what drivers do this weekend i think it's going to be really important for us to look at that see who maybe runs some mock qualifying runs in practice and give us an idea of who we want to be targeting when we go towards the actual race well, hope we see a great race this weekend. Iowa Speedway gets their first NASCAR Cup Series date. At long last, it's been a long time coming. Greg, thank you so much for being on the show this morning and sharing some insights, some data with us. Really appreciate it. Of course, if you're watching at home, you can find more of Greg's work at winthereace.info. Also, we'll do some stuff for my friends at Daily Downforce from time to time. Greg, thank you so much for joining us. We'll talk to you again real soon, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.